Uh, dear friends, this is a case about an elderly patient who has facularic glaucoma with hypermature cataract and loose zonules. The raise in trochlear pressure was controlled preoperatively with IV mannitol and anti glaucoma medications. And let's begin the surgery. Uh, this video is minimally edited and hence a bit long, and but it has got many critical points for us to learn, hence, bear with me. After making two side port incisions, I am staining the anterior capsule with a trepan blue and I am plan to inject a dispersive ovary now. And suddenly this happens. The entire capsular back complex moves anteriorly. I can see the equator of the lens in the anterior chamber. This is how it looks in the slow motion replay. I can see the equator of the lens just pop up into the anterior chamber. Now my strategy is to change the angle of attack. I am injecting OVD from the opposite end. I am able to push the lens back but I can clearly see there are areas of calcified zones which are very suspicious for me and I am expecting them to pose problems when I am performing the rexus. Uh, this is a temporal 2.8 millimeter incision. So I begin my rexus. The wrinkling of the anterior capsule clearly suggests how weak the zonules are. So the cap the forceps is the best bet in such a situation. I grasp the anterior capsule and carefully proceed. But as anticipated, as soon as I, rise, as I reach the danger zone, we can see the capsular bag is moving and the capsule refuses to tear. I go back and flatten the anterior capsule by using OVD over it. So to provide some counter traction, my plan is to hold the other end of the uh, the capsule with the micro forceps and trying to tear. Again, this strategy also does not work. The bag is really flimsy and very weak. It can't really support. So what I do is I go from the other end and try to complete the rexus. Again, as soon as I reach the area of zonular dehiscence, the capsule refuses to uh, tear. So now my plan B is to put in a CTR ring now. So after creating some space under the entry capsule, I am threading in the CTR uh, into the capsular bag. I always use my second instrument to compress the ring while dialing the ring inside to prevent stress on the healthy zonules. So I am able to see the ring which is passing through the equator of the bag and I want to dial it well beyond the area of the zonular dehiscence so that adequate support to the weak area is provided. Now to take care of the capsular flap which is remaining in the danger zone or the weak zone. I'm using a vitrector. This is my preferred technique to deal with these capsules in the area of weak zonules. The idea is we can cut the capsule without causing any stress on the zonules. So this is a technique which I frequently use and I found it to be very helpful. So I'm using a high cut rate, low flow rate and a moderate vacuum to gently nibble at the capsule and uh, take care of the flap without inducing any stress on the zonules. Now before removing the irrigating handpiece, I don't want to lose the chamber. So I inject OVD through the other end before removing the irrigating handpiece. So fill in the chamber with a little bit of an OVD. Now the plan is to enlarge the anterior capsulotomy opening a little bit. The plan is to use a uh, micro scissors. I'm making a small tangential cut on the entry capsule. Then using the Haldi Purkar forceps, I enlarge the capsulotomy to an adequate size. I'm just checking for the mobility of the nucleus, whether it is freely mobile without any movement of the bag. There is a small flap in the area of zonal dehiscence, which is bothering me a little bit. So I decide to take care of it. I try to tear it using a capsular forceps. It doesn't work. I go back to my cutter. Even that doesn't uh, give me the expected result in this 
at this moment of time so leaving that aside I proceed to emulsify the nucleus I begin the nucleus disassembly by performing the direct chop I bury the phaco tip into the nucleus pull the nucleus anteriorly using a sharp chopper score directly uh, with the direction going posteriorly and then I am trying to separate the two fragments as gentle as possible again bury the phaco tip into the substance of the nucleus the nucleus is slightly dense here lift it up and then chop it during lateral separation it is to be noted that I don't move my right hand at all predominant movement is done by my left hand alone and the separation is being done at multiple levels so that we are able to achieve the goal of separation without inducing too much stress on the zonules just grip the nucleus and try to separate using my left hand a little bit of a patience is a great uh, thing to have in such situations I'm again going back and trying to fill the entry chamber as well as the capsular bag with uh, dispersive OVD now moving on to emulsifying the fragments so the trick here is I'm trying to be as slow as possible something like a slow motion FACO the parameters are very low just to ensure that I don't have any turbulence I don't have any fluctuation in the entry chamber because I'm working a little bit more anterior because I'm worried about the flimsy bag the FACO power which I'm using is such that I don't want the fragment to leave the tip it has always has to be jumping around the tip and then slowly emulsified so this ensures that we don't have the chattering and the nucleus flying, flying around so again engage the the heminucleus I'm just trying to ensure that it is completely separate through and through here I'm using a blunt uh, dialer like instrument so we don't have any epinucleus the entire bag is exposed so we need to be extremely careful with our fluidics here again care is taken that the nuclear fragment does not leave the tip just using controlling the power with my foot pedal just enough to emulsify it without causing any chatter or turbulence so this is the last fragment and we're almost done you can note the stability of the entry chamber it's rock solid and I'm using very low parameters and the bottle height is also not very high and just when I'm about to complete again these air bubbles are really frustrating to have nevertheless it ends well the fragments are aspirated without any damage to the capsular bag I'm inflating the chamber with the OVD and making preparation to put the lens although I prefer to put a multi-piece iodine sulcus with optic capture in these cases uh, of zonular weakness in this particular case somehow I decided to put the lens in the bag so the first haptic has gone into the bag and uh, now my goal would be to the dial the lens into the bag but at this moment I realized that when I'm trying to dial it it's going to induce a lot of stress on the zonules so uh, midway I realized that this might not be the best option here so with now I try to think pull out the haptic which has gone into the bag so I change my plan now the about the idea of putting the lens in the bag I got both the haptics out into the above the iris I'm dialing them into the sulcus now I'm trying to place them in the sulcus now I change my plan and the, my strategy is now to place the IOL in the sulcus and have an optic capture so having gently maneuvered both the haptics above the anterior capsule and behind the iris now my next goal would be to remove all the OVD which is behind the lens in the capsular bag So I'm using bimanual IA and I'm trying to aspirate the sodium hyaluronate which I've used. 
So I lift up the, anterior, the lens and go behind the, uh, the IOL to remove all the cohesive OVD which I have used. So once the OVD is removed, uh, as soon as I come out, you can see the lens will decenter. So whenever we have a lens in the sulcus, uh, it can be freely mobile and there's a greater chance of getting decentered. So best way to ensure that this does not happen is to have it trapped in the excess margin. The optic capture has to be done. So this is what I'm trying to do now. The left hand has the irrigating cannula. I'm using a dialer since key hook. Uh, the goal is to ensure that the optics are gently maneuvered uh, into the capsular bag under the anterior capsule while the haptics remain in the sulcus. The pupil is slightly small. It's hindering my visualization. So again with the Sinsky hook, I am trying to negotiate the IUL and try to put it behind the capsular, uh, the anterior capsular flap. So still it is not really gone into the, the optic has not gone into the bag. So I need to make another attempt here. So I hold the edge of the lens now and then instead of pushing it back, I hold the lens, slide it out inside and then maneuver it under the entry capsule. Same way I do it here and now I have got the optic capture. The ovalization of the Rex is clearly indicative of the fact that we have achieved optic capture, the haptics are in the sulcus and this is a way of locking the lens into the capsule bag. So this ensures long term stability and centration. Before closing, I'm just checking for presence of any vitreous by using diluted triamcinol acetate. Uh, luckily there is none. To conclude, uh, I was lucky enough to finish this case in the best possible way. Let's go back and try to analyze what were the critical steps which really ensured a successful outcome in this situation. So what did we learn from this case? The first point would be the timing of the CTR insertion. This really helped me to stabilize the bag and prevent further progression of the zonular dehiscence. Otherwise this case would have ended up in uh, being an intracapsule extraction. The second critical point would be the use of dispersive OVD. It really helped to minimize the fluctuation of the entry chamber, kept the, uh, the bag formed and also protected the corneal endothelium. Slow parameters while performing FACO ensured that I had better control, minimal turbulence and less damage to the endothelium and the bag. Lastly, the multi-piece IOL with trapping of the optic inside the entry capsular opening ensured a long-term stability and centration of the IOL. The immediate post-op, four hours later, this is how it looked. There's a mild corneal edema, but eventually it cleared up and the patient is enjoying a good vision and is very happy about it. Thank you for watching and hope this helps.